Hi, my name is Dolores Souza and I have been working at the Broadcast Regulator in Chile for many years until recently. So in line with my previous work, I will focus on the risks and challenges of artificial intelligence, especially for human rights. When we speak about artificial intelligence, we refer to science and technology, to the development of engineering, mathematics, physics, robotics and others. But the application of artificial intelligence covers not only technical, but social spheres of life. It's nowadays used in newsrooms, in political campaigns, electoral systems, and other social relevant domains. So, when this technology goes beyond solving specific tasks, when we think in the broad field of institutions, the public sphere, and the functioning of society and everyday life, we have to think about meaning, about sense-making, and even trust. Making machines intelligent is enabling them to learn from data and, as the definition of intelligence by Niels Nielsen goes, to function appropriately and with foresight in its environment. So the development of artificial intelligence is most relevant. According to the Organization of American States that gathers 35 states from north to south, including the Caribbean, generative artificial intelligence and the technologies behind impact the four fundamental pillars of the OAS, development, democracy, human rights, and security. These concerns are in line with those of other intergovernmental organizations like the OECD. The development of artificial intelligence is, made, is mainly for good. It helps foster economic growth, can update big amounts of data so as to better target social programs, it helps improve lives and give science-based solutions to access to food, water, energy and health, according to the Organization of American States. But given its impact, it sets the need of national and regional policies, principles and regulations. Artificial intelligence is a powerful technology and algorithms are decision-making systems. Information today is basic. Our societies are informational and much of it relies on the internet. According to Europol, the enforcement agency in the European Union, in 2026, 90% of online content could be generated and manipulated by artificial intelligence. In our daily lives, much of the processes of decision-making are done by algorithms because they are programmed to solve specific problems from an array of data. They can be used to suggest us what series to watch on Netflix or what online newspaper to read, depending on past choices. In organizations, algorithms can be used for personal selection, to award a bank loan and to facial recognition. In the justice system, for example, risk assessment algorithms can be used to predict who is likely to commit a crime or become a victim. Depending on the level of importance, problem solving and decision making through AI carries different kinds of risks that can pose different levels of harm. Some of them are the product of technical or human error, as in many other spheres of life, such as inaccuracies or mistakes. But other risks are intentional, such as malware or falsehoods fed in the systems to generate misinformation and fake news. Generative artificial intelligence works with data and data has be to be taken from somewhere. So where does data come from? And what kind of mi mistakes could data produce? For large scale language modeling systems like GPT-3 and the like, technologists can use the dataset called Common Crawl, publicly available and widely used to train large language models. It's a corpus of almost half English text and the rest in six other languages. Another dataset is the Pile, a 825 giga gigabyte English text, mostly from academic and professional sources. So the quality of the results will depend on the data gathered. It's only a matter of quantity of 
it's not only a matter of quantity of data, but of diversity. According to scientists, large data sets must be improved, and they are mostly so by adding smaller, high quality, diverse data sets. But data sets are built from existing information from different sources that are cultural and historically bound to traditions, values, and worldviews. So, generative artificial intelligence and intelligence and its systems learn from existing data that was created by specific humans in specific moments and places. In that sense, data sets can have gender, ethnic, or religious bias pejorative content that sometimes are invisible to us because nobody has yet drawn attention to them. Culture is not static, it, in, it evolves over time, and so are human rights. What is normal behavior in one place or time can be regarded as inadequate in another time or place. That is why there are a number of strategies to address the issue of possible bias at a pre-data and data level so that users of data can detect objectionable, ob objectionable content. For example, there are softwares that include toxicity models to retrieve certain types of content or systems that classify profane and not profane content. Other systems can grow can run co-occurrence tests to find out if there are some bias towards some groups of people, for example, associating them with words that elicit negative sentiments. Still, some researchers of the pile, for instance, have pointed out that for all demographies, the average sentiment is negative, and their interpretation is that this is due to the actual data context, for example, articles, analysis of current affairs, and the content of news that tend to lead to have negative connotations. So this is an example of how cultural bound our data is. And what about mathematical models and statistics? What kind of risk can they convey? We have seen that in artificial intelligence works with data, but how does it analyze it? Here we can face a number of problems. I will refer to two of them. The first one is that artificial intelligence models are based on information already processed, like academic papers, books and newspapers, and in that way cannot foresee emergent situations or new forms of reasoning. And even though the analysis can take into account a huge amount of data, it cannot convey meaning to complex social situations or analyze content in a critical way, likewise human interpretation. An example of this is the AI-generated sitcom Nothing Forever, premiered in Twitch and Twitter, that had to be taken off because of homophobic content. In fact, an article at the University of the Republic of Uruguay calls these digital narratives pastiche, con copied from existing content and states that they cancel the future. Moreover, most of statistical analysis made by AI models rank the existing coded data and run statistics like cluster analysis and correlations that tend to over-represent averages, for example, regarding population groups or types of opinions, and they tend to under-represent minorities or divergent opinions. So, these models can reproduce structural inequalities and bias. The documentary Coded Bias in Netflix, with the contribution of several researchers and the work of Joy Bulamwini from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, uncovered how machine learning and algorithms can lead to certain outcomes associated to certain kinds of people. The main example focuses on facial recognition and the bias related to non-white people. These bias can be amended at a technical level, and they are, of course, but researchers or software experts have to do this intentionally 
with a scientific and or ethical purpose, for example, non-discrimination, respect to social values such as plurality, inclusion and participation. So these values can serve as standards for artificial intelligence ethics. That is why when faced to complex analysis with regard to social matters, the use of data needs a multidisciplinary approach beyond technical expertise based on a policy to create guidelines inspired on human rights principles. A second problem is that in general, people do not know how algorithms and AI models work. And most of the time, the managers at public or private entities who make use of these tools do not know it either. In this sense, in this sense, there is a lack of transparency on how algorithms work and take decisions. And these decisions are very relevant because they could solve a pressing problem for someone, let's say a financial or health or housing need. There is a lack of algorithm governance or any other form of the rule of law. If you're not an expert, you cannot understand all the processes behind data coding and classification. You cannot know if there is an error, if at some point the process of codification or analysis was supervised by humans or even why this algorithm was used. So that's why there are regulatory initiatives. Developed countries have faced the problem of risk regulating at some, some level. The European Union will launch next year a rule book on AI systems that could be the first regulation in the world of artificial intelligence, the Artificial Intelligence Act. In the, United, in the Americas, in the United States, there are only general policies initiatives, but no specific plans to regulate generative AI, according to Cullen International, a regulation think tank. Beginning in September, the Canadian government launched a consultation on a non-binding code of practice to regulate main aspects of generative artificial intelligence. I would like to focus a while on what is happening in Latin America. A recent artificial intelligence index states that it's important for countries to have a sound strategy on AI and that the strategy has to be institutionalized with a minimum of stakeholder, stakeholders' involvement so as to guarantee its implementation and govern, governance. Furthermore, the index suggests the strategy has to meet the agreed UNESCO criteria of common good. Unfortunately, there is still much to do in the Latin American region in terms of regulation and governance. Regulations relate mainly to cybersecurity and data protection in general, but do not address the specifics of artificial intelligence, with the exception of maybe four countries. The Latin American Index concludes that the challenges and risks of AI have to be addressed before they outweigh its opportunities, precisely because, as I mentioned before, it's a powerful technology that spans almost all realms of our lives. Thank you very much.